Okay, in this video, I'm going to give a demonstration of how to run uh, the Cox Proportional Hazards model uh, in SPSS in order to uh, model uh, survival data. So uh, essentially, we're going to be carrying out a survival analysis and looking at predictors of um, the survival and hazard functions. So what we'll do, uh, first off, is note where the data is coming from. It's actually coming from uh, an example that's provided in the Stata user's manual and uh, for uh, survival analysis and uh, I actually downloaded it from this uh, location right here. It's essentially uh, data for a cancer drug trial with 48 participants, 28 receiving a treatment uh, which we'll uh, just call drug 1 uh, or a placebo which is uh, drug 0 and we also have their ages uh, from the onset of the study. So essentially, looking at our data set um, and, and with our variables, we have study time, which is uh, the number of months uh, a, a participant um, was uh, involved in the study uh, up until the term a terminating event. The terminating event uh, would be either death, uh, which is actually coded on the died variable as one, uh, or uh, essentially a right censoring, either the subject was lost uh, from the study during uh, the actual data collection period uh, or uh, at, by the end of the uh, study um, uh, uh, period um, death had not actually been observed. So uh, in that case, uh, the, the, that uh, particular case would be right censored and given a value of zero on the died variable. Uh, we also have drug which is again coded zero for uh, placebo group and one for uh, a drug treatment and then age which is reflecting the age of the participant at the start of the study. So let's run our analysis. So I'm going to go to analyze survival, go down to Cox regression right here and we're going to put uh, the study time variable into the time box. So again this is reflecting uh, the time from the onset of the study until a terminating event either death or, or censoring. Um, and so that's uh, in months, by the way. So time is in, in this box. We're going to put our censoring variable, which is died, over into the status uh, box. And I know this is kind of a grim uh, example, but uh, this is, um, you know, survival analysis is a uh, common technique in biost biostats, um, uh, epidemiology, and, uh, you know, medical uh, research and um, so that's just kind of the nature of what we what we're working with but obviously this data can be used in lots of different areas but um, in terms of status we're going to click on define event and we're going to type in a one uh, right here indicating that the event has occurred so the target event was death um, and so if that event um, occurs that would be reflected in a value of one on the died variable obviously a value of zero indicates that a case is uh, censored. So we're going to click on continue and we'll move age over to the covariates box as well as drug. And drug is a nominal variable um, but you know we can use this uh, because uh, essentially uh, this variable is, is a dummy variable. Um, okay so now we can uh, go to options if we want. If we want to ask for a confidence interval around uh, our, some of our coefficients we can ask for that 95 percent confidence interval here and uh, we'll click on OK and look at our output. So you can see uh, in our output, uh, you'll notice that there's a block zero, which is essentially reflecting a null model with no predictors. Then we have block one that incorporates both of our predictors. So you can see that we have age right here and drug right here. And so uh, essentially what we're, uh, uh, we want to start off with is looking at the overall fit of the model. And so there are or a, a couple of options, but probably the more preferred model uh, or option is this one right here, looking at the uh, chi-square test, which is look, uh, um, evaluating the fit of our model containing our predictors relative to a null model with no predictors. So the null model uh, would essentially assume that the regression coefficients, all the regression coefficients are equal to zero. Um, in our model, though, we've obviously estimated our regression coefficients, and we're essentially testing whether uh, we can assume that at least one regression coefficient is significantly different from zero. So 
at any rate, the chi-square test, uh, you can see right here, this is our chi-square value, the degrees of freedom for the model, which is equal to the number of predictors, and then our significance level, which is the p-value. So uh, if I were reporting this for an article, I would just uh, say p you know, is less than 0 .001. And essentially, that would be an indication that we have a significant improvement in fit of our uh, model containing our two predictors relative to a null model. So then we can look at the individual regression coefficients to uh, identify uh, the significant contributors to the model. So essentially what we're doing when we're looking at our regression coefficients right here, this is modeling or this is reflecting uh, the predicted change in the log hazard of the terminating event, which uh, our, our, our main terminating event is death. So um, essentially this is reflecting uh, the predicted change in log hazard um, uh, for every one unit increase on our predictor variable. And so, um, you know, oftentimes, you know, when we think about log hazard uh, or things like that, or um, it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but you can just pretty much uh, imagine that essentially a value that is positive is going to be reflecting increasing uh, hazard um, as um, uh, of the terminating event as scores on the predictor increase. So you can think about it more loosely that way. Um, so at any rate, we can see that persons who were older uh, at the time in which the study began uh, exhibited a greater likelihood or greater hazard of death, um, which um, probably is not all that surprising, but uh, nevertheless, that's what that's indicating. You can see the drug variable our coefficient is negative. And remember our, our coding on this particular coefficient or on this particular variable, zero was reflecting the uh, control group and one was reflecting the treatment group. So the fact that this is negative is actually indicating uh, a greater uh, hazard um, of death uh, for the control group as opposed to the treatment group. Now, are these predictors statistically significant? We can essentially look at our uh, significance column right here. These are the p-values for each of these. And uh, you can see that both predictors were statistically significant in the model. So uh, also keep in mind, so uh, you know, as we think about modeling predictors of the hazard, or in this case, when we're looking at the unstandardized coefficient, the log hazard, um, think about it this way, that as hazard increases, that would also be an indicator that the survival uh, time uh, is decreasing, or the, um, the elapsed time uh, in which case uh, um, an observation survives to a certain point, uh, that that's decreasing. So given that this coefficient is positive, uh, that's indicating that uh, persons who are older survived uh, less uh, time um, than those who were younger. So that's just a way to think about that. And this, when we look at the drug uh, variable right here, you can see that the survival time uh, for the control group would be uh, less than the survival time for the treatment group. Uh, and again, both of these predictors were statistically significant. Now, as I said before, the unstandardized coefficient is reflecting the, the change in the log hazard um, for the terminating event. Uh, as scores on our, our values on our predictors are increasing. And as I said before, the, the, that's kind of counterintuitive. So you might be interested in looking at the hazard ratio, which is this uh, right here. So it's, it looks very similar to what we see in the context of standard logistic regression, uh, where in that case we would be talking about an odds ratio. But when we're looking at um, uh, when we're carrying out survival analysis, we uh, are going to be referring here to a hazard ratio. And the hazard ratio is just reflecting the multiple, multiplicative increase uh, in the hazard uh, as scores on the, our values on the predictors are increasing. So essentially a value of one uh, for a given hazard uh, ratio would, would be an indication that there's no change in the hazard um, uh, for the terminating event uh, with increasing values on the predictor variable. And essentially, uh, you know, the uh, a hazard ratio that is equal to one would also be consistent with a regression coefficient that was equal to zero, meaning that there's no change in the hazard as uh, values on the predictor are increasing. Now, a hazard ratio that is greater than one would be an indication that uh, the hazard is increasing with increasing values on the predictor, and that would also be consistent with a regression coefficient that is actually greater than zero. And then a hazard ratio that is less than one uh, 
uh, would be consistent with a regression coefficient that is less than zero. Uh, because basically, um, our hazard ratios are just um, um, kind of a, a rescaling of our um, of our coefficients over here. That's that's essentially all that's going on. So, nevertheless, you can see that in terms of our uh, hazard ratios, you can see that. Uh, the uh, hazard ratio for age is uh, is greater than one. That's indicating that uh, the hazard um, for death is increasing uh, or is greater uh, uh, with increasing scores on uh, age. Um, so basically, older individuals uh, had a greater hazard of death uh, than younger individuals, uh, which again would indicate that uh, if you're older, you have uh, l less survival uh, time until death. Uh, in terms of the drug variable, you can see that uh, the hazard ratio is 0.105, uh, which is uh, less than the 1. And so, as you can see right here, that just means that if you were in the treatment group, that you were actually uh, surviving uh, longer. All right, so the other thing to note, uh, too, um, if you want to uh, test for significance with respect to the uh, hazard ratio, we asked for a confidence interval right here, 95% confidence interval. The null hypothesis concerning the hazard ratio is that the hazard ratio is equal to 1. So that's the, the null hypothesis. Uh, so if the null hypothesis of 1 falls outside the lower and the upper bound, then that would be an indication that you have statistical significance. Um, if uh, 1 falls between uh, the lower and the upper bound, then that would, also, that would indicate that um, our hazard ratio is not, stati not statistically significant. So you can see in both of these cases that uh, the null of 1 is falling outside of the lower and the upper bound, which would be an indication that, um, that both predictors are uh, contributing significantly to the model.